For almost a decade on my TV show, Interview with Ed, I've been interviewing extra-dimensional beings and consciousnesses from a number of different realms. Many of my questions have been answered, but with every answer comes more questions. Join me on my ongoing quest to find out who are we, why are we here, and where are we going? It is a crazy time we're in with all the solar flares, which I wanted to get into a little bit with you, Akura. But first, let's welcome Akura. Welcome. Good to Welcome. have you. Thank you. <laughs> Good to so have you here. To be online. Yes. Yeah. I'm so excited and honored. And I'm excited too. I'm excited to, to hear your story. I sort of heard you sent me that clip of the interview you did before, but love to get into your fascinating story. You have such a fascinating story when it comes to your journey. And then later, I think many of you know of your amazing light language and your beautiful voice. And we're hoping we can you can share some of that with us today too. So, yeah. but first, tell us about tell us about your crazy journey. You got stuck in another dimension. How did that happen? <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, this happened in year twenty twenty one. So it was very crazy. So it's hard for me to explain this because it happened. It was a process, so to speak. So the energy slowly changed. It has already begun in March twenty twenty one. Something very weird was about to happen. And then I received very strange comments on my previous platforms because I had other YouTube channel before and Instagram channel, a Telegram channel. So, and then I noticed this very strange comments. So more and more, it started with a few and then they became stronger and very numerous. So I couldn't say anymore who is a bot and who is a true person. So, and I just spent so much time blocking, <laughs> right. blocking comments and it was too much. Yeah. So, and then in April, 2021, I was sure, uh, uh, this is really something different this time. There was much darkness behind all this. And then I received a message from my team in April, 2021, the gate to the fourth dimension has opened. So, and I had no idea what kind of message yeah. is this, please. And then I asked my twin play Marcel, I received a message to get to the fourth dimension has opened. Marcel, I thought, you all, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> so we had no idea. Yeah. Had you and been the- aware, sorry, had you been aware of sort of that terminology of by that time, the fourth dimension, you know, fourth density, the ascension, you'd been already sort of tapped yes, into of that, course. To was- that language, right? Yeah, of course, I did light okay. language uh, transmissions before, had my spiritual awakening many years before, so I knew. So, mm-hmm. But it was a strange feeling because I had no idea what they are talking about. Mm-hmm. Okay, the gate has opened. Okay, <laughs> let's make a note. <laughs> so to speak, yeah, then mm-hmm. at the end of April, the beginning of May, it has begun. That they hacked into our server, our phones, Pinch. they had a reset, so I couldn't go online anymore. Over and over air of boom. So like wow. So the same happened on my computer. So and I received very strange comments uh, on Telegram, private messages. How I'm scaring you. You know? Oh, oh. I have to do wow. this. Boom. And meanwhile, I had a shutdown of my phone. And meanwhile, I received a comment. So are we scaring you? This. So and then I know no, this is definitely a other leak. I don't know what it is, but that's the on dark. So, and then mm-hmm. I even try to call my friends, but they always yes, hard checked into the connection. Oh, I cannot call my friends anymore. Was there, a, did you hear any voices? Yeah. It was first, dude, yeah. you know, when you call someone and then right, right. That, boom. And did you hear any deep, deep, like, like a Darth Vader voice or anything like that? Sometimes too. Something's yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or that someone else picked up the phone. So, oh my gosh, now I'm talking to a different Right. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. So, so I just want to share because in it was around, yeah, around 2021. So another guest who we've had on the show here, uh, Phoenix Rising, she's mm-hmm. coach and does light language. And, and we were talking with her one day, my buddy Steve and I. And she chimed in and she said, it's in the, it's in the computer, it's in the computers. It's in the, it's like the AI or something's gone. Yeah. Somehow they've gotten in the computers. 
And yes, then as, I had as, the same. I saw exactly the same. I told myself yeah. they are inside the computer now, Marcel. What right, should right. we do? <laughs> and and as we were talking, we heard this like strange, weird feedback. And it's like all of me and Steve were just like, we threw the phone down because it made some mm-hmm. weird sound. And we were like, what the hell is that? And then it like cut off the connection. got cut yeah. off. And then when we called Phoenix back and we're like, what is going on here? This is absolutely nuts just the weird sounds that the phone had made yeah okay. oh interesting or so that that when i turned the computer on for example right. then i heard a very strange ai word speaking wow for example so okay for example it was very weird yeah so it became well, stronger and stronger so when did you know or realize you were in this other dimension this other reality <laughs> the beginning that's a loaded May. question but Beginning yeah, of May. Okay. Beginning of May, yeah. They destroyed our whole technology. Very strange was I was able to talk to my family. So they allowed it still to talk to my family. That was very strange. So, so when you say talk, to, explain the differences. So like talking to your family and how could you n- not talk to other people? Is that just because of the, yeah, the high try to call them? The connection, or I was in contact with my friends on social media, for example, and then right. they sent me messages. And I was sure that's not them. This is not my, oh, okay. my friends would never tell me this horrible thing. Yes, they yeah. said things like, so we'll be entering the whole dimension soon. Ooh, call the police, but they will not help you. And these were messages from uh-huh. my friend. So okay. then I knew, no, these are not my friends. Right, right, right. So, but my family, as I contacted them, they respond normal, you know, like I know them. <laughs> Right, nothing strange, <laughs> nothing not. <laughs> nothing uh, strange. Okay, uh-huh. Yeah. So so, so that's how you're able to tell. Yeah, of course. And then I felt something is off and it felt like someone is watching us. Someone is watching us from the neighbor's house or on the streets. It, it felt like someone really is watching us. The crazy thing is a soul sister of us lived with us in the same apartment, in the same house. She had her own flat. We had our own flat. And she came down to us and she said, do you hear the helicopter surrounding our house? Every night there is a helicopter surrounding our house. For example, so and it became stronger and stronger. What our mm. friend said, she ran alone. She was so in panic. And she took, didn't took us with her. So she just ran. She, she said just goodbye. Ran. Yeah, she just ran. She was very in panic. And then a few days, a few weeks later, as she ran, they captured us. Yeah. Then we were completely alone. Okay. So yeah, explain that. So when she ran, she, she just took off. She you never can. saw. Yeah. Them. Yeah. She canceled the contract. She just ran. Uh, she ran out of the, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. She, she just moved. Ran. She really moved out she of moved. the apartment. She moved. Yeah. And she left Germany. She ran because <laughs> wow. she felt the darkness. Yeah. It was very and- dark. And then you said you got captured. So what, explain that. How What happened there? Yeah, the black helicopter, for example, surrounded us for real. So then I noticed and I paid attention to this every night. There's really a helicopter surrounding us. She's hmm. right. And she was on the top, right? We were in the second floor and she was in the fourth floor, so to speak. That's why she heard it very closely. <laughs> So, yeah, and it became mm. stronger and stronger. And then I have that feeling someone is watching us. And as this black helicopter over and over surrounded our house, then we noticed a black car in front of our door. And this happened as this woman ran. Then we were completely alone. So to speak, our phones didn't work anymore. The computer didn't work anymore. So, yeah, we lived in a city alone. So because we settled down there new, so, uh, and can I ask what city was this in, in Germany? Leipzig, Leipzig. And is it, I'm not too, my geography is a little, to, is it north or south? Is it? Yeah, close to Berlin. East. Okay. Oh, okay. East, I see. Yeah. And so then you, so black cars, black helicopters. What, yeah. There was uh, a car standing in front of the door. It was a black car and there were men inside with glasses on and a black laser. So, and they started to watch us closely. So like, 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 like the movie Men in Black, right? Yeah, la, or like Agent Smith from Matrix. Agent yeah. Smith. <laughs> they had really almost right. the same energy, yes. Wow. They started to stalk us and it became stronger and stronger. So, and I cannot say so because they surrounded our house and 
we run too sooner or later, so more suddenly. And as we run, right, then I just took my bag with me. Marcel, too, we had no idea where to go. I said, come on, let's go to my family because we were able to talk to my family. <laughs> <Maybe. Right. laughs> and where are they at? Where Are they nearby in your... South. Okay. I don't yeah. know. How far is that from where... Far were... away. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, and then we took a train and then the people follow us. And they had a very crazy technology. It looked like a notebook or a laptop. And they over and over used codes. And they took a seat next to us or they follow us. And it was very strange. Maybe we already were in the fourth dimension without realizing this. Because we were surrounded by very crazy people. And they all had a computer or a phone. And they're just codes, codes. And they look very robotic. Like, oh, these humans. And then I remember we took a train. And there was a man with us sitting next to us. He had a computer and the whole screen was blue, just blue, just codes. And then I saw Biden in the screen. So, oh my fucking gosh, yeah. you know, blue. What, so what did Biden look like? What kind of picture was it? It was blue and it looked like it's Microsoft, almost, but uh -huh. it was not Microsoft. And it was even not Apple. So it was a software, I don't know, a completely different technology. So, and then he logged in, it's very strange, and he opened up a screen, just codes, tick, 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 tick. And all what he did was tick, 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 using codes. And then he looked to us, tick, 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 codes, tick, tick, this way. It was so strange. And then I thought, frequency, yeah, frequencies here, everywhere. And then suddenly I looked out because we took a seat in a train and slowly the mountain started to shake. Oh my goodness. So there were rocks and the rocks moved this. Okay. This way, like waves. Yeah. So, oh my fucking gosh. <laughs> or so, what is this? What is this? A disguise. Talk, and, talk, 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 just using codes. And Marcel was seeing this too. Is he seeing the mountains? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wavy? So, exactly the same what I saw. <laughs> yeah. Well, I that's good. Crazy. I mean, in a sense, that's good that you're not alone in that way. Yeah. Yeah. That you so have Marcel there. Yeah, of course. And after that experience, I was guided to a few other star seeds and I saw them with my third eye. So and then I said, oh gosh, these star seeds, they saw for like crazy too. I saw them just with my third eye. And then after this experience, I contacted them and they told me, yes, I was in the fourth dimension myself. So, oh my gosh, during the same time. So yes, it was horrible. So, but so you started to realize while you're on the run that you're in a different reality. Yes, as this rock started to shake like mm. in waves. And then just NPCs, androids, whatever, they just entered the train suddenly. The, the Mr. Smiths. Gosh. Mr. Smiths, young people, they all had a cell phone, 100%. And they all used codes. So, and they couldn't talk for real. So, so they weren't communicating verbally? Yeah, this way. They didn't talk or through telepathy, or they used their phones and talked to each other. Wow. And, and they all did, surrounded us. And they surrounded you knowing they knew that you were sort of different in a way, or did it, were you, yeah, did you stand was, out at all? It was all? very strange. It was very strange, to be honest. It looked like a few of them, they were curious. Who are we? Mm -hmm. There were a few that used their phones this way, and they hold it to us, so... Yes, because they tried, I don't know what they tried to figure out. And they were wondering, who are we? So what are we doing here? Because it did, was other dimension. Right. And did you have conversations with anybody? Through telepathy more. Oh, so okay. then I heard them talking. I was thinking about a few of them, they were able to talk. And when they talked, they talked about our thoughts. So it's like, I heard them talking. And I was thinking about this and I started to talk about it. It was so, you know? Right, crazy. right. Interesting. And most of the time they spoke about food because they were hungry. Okay. So, so walk <laughs> us through. I'm just, it's fascinating because I've experienced that kind of stuff, but only on mushrooms. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, was... so I, I have some reference, you know, the waving of the, you know, of the like the mountains, the far background becomes sort of blurry. 
close up yeah. looks fine, but the things in the background, everything is sort of pulsing. Yes, um, of course. So it has to come through this very strong, yeah. And and then there's one, I, the one and only time I took a heroic dose. Are, are you familiar with the five gram heroic Terrence McKenna's heroic dose? That that was trippy. That's that's when I went into another dimension, and I could see the different timelines. So I'm just wondering. <laughs> so it sounds like you got without the mushrooms, you got s- sort of stuck. But you said you were. It felt like you were there for a long time. How long did this did this go on? This the days I would imagine. If your almost friends moving one, out, yeah, wow. almost one month we stayed there. Yeah, we were just traveling for Germany, and we tried to get out of there. Yeah, and and how would you go about even trying to get out? So you you made these connections with these other star seeds. How just sort of walk us through? So you're on the train, I guess. So let's go back to the train and yeah. take us from there. How did you navigate that that reality? They, yeah, they controlled everything there. So when we had the idea, I went to visit my family. They didn't allow it because we took a train. Then they, you know, no train arrived. Or we also did some time shift there. So they, boom, and the train suddenly was somewhere else. What the fuck? Now we are on a completely different train station. Actually, we wanted to escape and to get out of there. And then we were somewhere else. So we were like, they didn't allow us to arrive there. So we were just surrounded by these NPCs and they used very horrible frequencies. So, so in a sense, for, you know, how we understand physics and continuity was just all bonkers. It wasn't, was it not like the continuity of time and space and situations? Mm-hmm. And it was that, it seemed like that was just kind of going nuts. It wasn't, there was yeah, no continuity. Yeah, they tried to make us crazy, driving us crazy. That was the plan, you know. Did they try to make you crazy? Very weird. Yeah. Or, tried, or yeah. just because you're in a different reality, does it seem like you're going crazy? Um, maybe it's both. <laughs> okay, right. Oh, it right. was very crazy because we were able to go into the supermarket, uh-huh. but we were surrounded by completely different people. So because we also took the train back to Leipzig again, to Saxony, because they didn't allow us to arrive at my family's house. So that's what we tried over and over again. And then, okay, we go back to Leipzig, to our home, and completely different people were in the supermarket working. But we were able to buy some food, what? Right. But we felt it's not a good idea to buy food there. It felt so artificial, everything. So it was very strange. They printed food there, for example. They printed they used, food? Yeah, they used AI push them and they programmed the food in and it was there. Okay. Yeah, so so by AI. that time, you must have been figuring out you were in a different, somehow you'd slipped into another reality. Yes, completely. The trains were different. The longer we stayed there, the more different timelines we saw. There were also many trains, no driver in the car, just mm-hmm. based on the AI, everything. So, yeah, that was a little bit creepy, to be honest. Even to see the technology they used. Yeah, massive G towers, right? That mixed okay. with Nikola Tesla, like what? Nikola Tesla mixed with G, massive towers. <laughs> and the sun looked different also. How did the sun, different. how did the sun feel or look? What can you describe? Very hot, that? very hot and dry, very hot. Mm. And there was no trail on the sky in 40. Always a clean blue sky. Oh, no chemtrails. Huh. <laughs> but That's the not a bad bank. Very, very hot. Oh, interesting. And so what, so Beth's saying here, was this fourth dimension just a very different and scary timeline? It's my understanding that most of us are in the 40 now. Yeah, it was almost the same way. I believe it was the low astral playing this song. Right. We also saw dead people. In Dead people. Yeah. So because we traveled through Germany and we searched right. for our friends, we searched for my family. So, and then we knocked on the door because we were hungry. We had no home to stay. So we traveled through Germany. I remember we also stayed in the city Heidelberg. So that's the other area of Germany. And it was a little bit quieter there because in Heidelberg, there is a ley line, a powerful ley line. So, and we felt it in our hearts, we must travel to Heidelberg because we have more protection there. You know, these are powerful portals when you are close to a ley line. 
Yep. And it was a little bit quieter there, but we searched up for a place to stay. And that's why we knocked on the doors. So, and the lights were on, but you saw these people shape shifting. So there was no one. And then we looked through the window, a person shape shifted. And they opened the door and there was no soul in their eye. Like, what are you doing here? That was their energy. It's like, well, oh, I see. Dead, dead people in that sense. They were animated so yeah, uh, but, but like like there. zombies yeah, yeah they <laughs> stuck in the whole dimension yeah that souls and they still lived in the house and they believe they're still alive yeah Pretty interesting wow so you know by this time because i had you know in my five gram experience i had a short time you know just one night where i was in this other dimension you're going through this through months and uh, how i would imagine because just in my one night of insanity, it, you know, yeah, you're sort of trying to figure it out. You're like, what's going on? What, how did I get here? What, so, so how does that take its toll on your psyche? It's hard to explain that. On one hand, we were curious, to be honest, because it was a very strange reality. But I'm so wondering everything... what, did you record any of your conversations with Marcel? <laughs> Cause you guys would have been fun. Just like you two talking about what your experiences are. To in be, real time. Actually, we had much material, yeah. So I was oh. in conversation with people before, but as the computer bomb had a shutdown 100%, all my information conversations I had, they were gone. Oh, I also wow. was in contact with people before. They were fully aware of what's happening soon. So, and I had no idea who they are, and I believe these are my friends. And they said the same, yeah, so and they will be in the whole dimension there soon. For example, they told me this very strange things for Paul. So and actually, you know, I would have all these conversations, but the computer push had a shutdown. And my phones too, so wow, what so it remains is a conversation I had with a soul sister. And she okay. was there too, and that video is still online on my YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, okay. So so there's a video that you recorded in that other dimension that still showed up in this dimension. After that. Oh, it was uh, right a after. With a soul sister, I saw with okay. my third eye that she's suffering. Yeah, mm -hmm. she had the same experience. Yeah. Okay. So she talked about the exact same type of people and stuff. Oh, but is this your soul sister in America? Yeah. Okay. So she was but, in America. Yeah. So she was in America experiencing very similar type situation. Yeah. She was also surrounded just by entities, the same. Fascinating. So, so this explain how you get us out of that. Like, how did you come back into this reality? Start re realizing that you were in this other sort of dimension. I called my team over and over again, over and over, but it was not easy for them to help us. What I saw because they created very strong grids. What I saw, they just grids too. The dog okay. wants so to yeah. stay, but you know, it's different to the grids we used. That's why it was not easier for them to help. I called them all. So please help us. Please help us. Because what they did was very crazy, to be honest. So with these frequencies and everything, and I just cried, to be honest, as it was almost unbearable to stay there. And then I remember Marcel and me, we both used our hearts. I remember. So we all called for help, Marcel and me. Mm. So, and I remember then we simply tried it again. We must arrive at my family's house. Let's try it again, even when they don't allow us to go there. But we do it anyway. So, and then we were guided suddenly. I cannot say maybe our team helped us. Or it was because Marcel and me are twin planes and we did something. I cannot say for sure. But as we entered the border of Bavaria, Suddenly, everything mixed, and suddenly we were surrounded by real people again. Because every person there, every NPC had a phone. And most of them were young, in the age of 20, 21. So they've got, they were all, all just young people. But as we entered the border of area, suddenly all the people entered the train and they read some newspaper for example, or they read a book and not everyone had a phone. And then uh -huh. we were sure slowly we'd come back. What is this? Yeah. And then finally we arrived at my family's house in the young thin, to be honest, we had not for real food. So, and they just saw, oh shit, they are in trouble. 
and they were already questioning it because I was gone. So they couldn't call me anymore. So my computer bush, my phone bush. So, and they were worried as well. Right. Yeah. And, so that, and that sort of anchor to the family and going back into sort of a normal reality, in a sense, people reading books that slowly started to the other reality started to fade away. Is that yeah. what happened? Yeah. It happened. Did it, was it quick or was Bavaria. it? I try to remember quick, I think it was when we arrived Bavaria, something okay. happened. Maybe, maybe the, uh, the frequency or like you were saying, ley lines or different, you know, some of those towers that are creating a certain grid or something, then you could. Yeah, it was travel. very interesting in Heidelberg and you know, there's a ley line straw one. And mm -hmm. this NPC there, I mean, we were just surrounded by NPCs. They were kind in Heidelberg. They didn't attack us. They saw mm -hmm. us, but they led us, and that was interesting. So we were still in the other dimension, but they led us. They didn't attack us with their phones, but the others, yes, just frequencies over and over again. But they didn't in Heidelberg, and that was interesting. So you said your heart, your connection to your family, <clears throat> your connection to Marcel. It, what other type of techniques, or how did your heart help you guide you out of that situation? Yeah, we called our yeah. team over and over again and we trusted our hearts and yeah, we simply tried it. <laughs> we were very creative. We took many different trains that way different finally to arrive in Bavaria. It was wow. actually very complicated, yeah, what we did, but I don't who, know, but it helped. Who is your team? <laughs> Octurians in first case. Okay. And I also work a lot with Yeshua too. Yeshua, Mary Magdalene, for example, but in first case, the Octorin. So I called them, but I also called the Pleiadians. I called them also. <laughs> right. yeah. In that type of situation, you got to, you know, yeah, I called them all, Yeshua, Pleiadians, or Brotherton, please help us, Tyrians, you must do something. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Well, that's a valuable lesson to call upon, you know, the first, I think, the family. And that sort of heart, that heart connection. Cause I remember in my situation too, I, you know, I was, that was helping me to get navigate that situation and uh, anything that you have that, you know, long term heart connection with. So, you know, a friend, a spouse, a, a family members. Yeah. That's remember that can keep us going, but I can't believe it happened for so long. That was wild. I had a trip to Fulvi. For me, it was, uh, I literally, I saw different versions of reality. Mm -hmm. sort of happened in my mind's eye but but i remember just walking on the ground and it was a different ground and it was a different you know different the rocks were in different places so it was familiar but different <laughs> in that sense that you're and you're just like what is this reality and then you think for me that that's it you're just you're stuck in this like you're in this dream that you can't wake up from and you just you there's a, a sense of accepting it and then knowing that you're, that there's another version of you. So for me, I was like, there's another Ruben that comes from this other reality, you know, <laughs> version of me is over there doing that thing. But I guess this version of me is stuck here now in this other dimension. So, okay, we're just going to make the best of it, you know? So, yeah. so I can imagine, you know, the steps that you, you went through, but again, my, mine was very, just one night. And, but it seemed like an eternity and I'm just curious. So the guidance that you were getting, so, so let's back up before this happened, you were doing your, were you doing the work that you do now? Were you doing light language? Yeah. You were, how did you step into becoming in tune and connected to our cosmic family? And the guys, like, for example, your Arcturian background, how did that, how did you come to that realization that mm -hmm. you were connected to the Arcturians? So I must say I'm clairvoyant since childhood. So I always had connections. Okay to my family. So I saw orbs, beings, entities. I saw them in my dreams, standing in my room. Most of the dark ones, I saw them also. So many different entities. So I was always clairvoyant, but I was raised very Catholic. Mm -hmm. So, and that was not easy for me to believe in my gift because it's called occultism, right? And satanic. So, and you know, I believe that also, so that I'm evil, I'm possessed. So, and then I needed so much time to overcome this trauma 
to be honest. So, and then when I turned into 18, for example, I had a very dark experience there too. And then I told to myself, Sandra, you don't want to be this way anymore. You must change your life. So you deserve different. And then I started to work on myself. And when I turned to 2020, so I had something like a spiritual awakening, like push a, a shift. So, and I was guided to many books. First, it started with books about empaths and hypersensitive people, right? Because I was always curious. I wanted to know my home. Where is my home? Where is my home? And I always have that. When I was a child, I was very deep in it. So I always looked up to the stars. I studied astronomy books and I always searched for my home. But I had no idea where it is. And then I had these visions of other dimensions from other galactics, for example. But I believed I'm possessed by the devil. I was afraid to speak about it. And then I tried to delete this psychic muscle, so this thing. Like, it's not there. You know, I can't see anything because I believe I'm crazy. So, and when I turned to 21, 22, then I saw, hey, I'm not crazy. Because a good friend shared a video with me. It was a video about Syrian Stasi. It was the mm. first video I saw. It was in English. And he just told me, watch that video. So I think it can help you. So, and I just saw the video, the music, and I cried. I cried. It was like, this is exactly what I felt always. So I'm not from this place. So I'm from my other dimension, from my other galaxy. And the message was so deep. I just cried. And then I had something like a big awakening. And then I was curious. I wanted to know everything. Who are the Syrians? Oh, right. who are the Pleiadians? Yeah. And then sure. I just trusted my heart. So which group is very close to me? Yeah. And then I was guided to a few races. So, so then, yeah, I trained my psychic muscle again. So, and I said, Hey, Sandra, you are not crazy because you are clairvoyant since childhood. But I tried to do this, right? Because I believe I'm evil. <laughs> yes. So, so the, so you had to unprogram that sort of fear based projection yeah. of these types of gifts. Yes, of course. I had to reprogram myself in almost everything in my life. Yeah. And uh, in that journey, what you said started around? When I was 18, it was the okay. dark experience I had. And then I started to cut my hair off and I started to be big and smooth. And I was guided more and more back to my intuition. So what is my intuition telling me? So I suffered my entire life. So I deserve different. Yeah. And then I started to reprogram myself. And the more I reprogrammed myself, the more I was guided to spirituality automatically. Mm. You had your YouTube channel and you were you doing light language and these types of things before this mm -hmm. thing? Okay. So I didn't really start. I think you came onto my radar like about a year ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you put out some videos on Instagram and and your piercing eyes and your beautiful voice, you know. Thank you. And, and it's it, it is, it's encapsulating, you know, it pulls you in. So so we were like, whoa, who's this? And then you're, you know, you're doing <laughs> light language and you're just like, so it's very I think for many at that time, you became quite popular over, over a short amount of time, but it was also, it re there was a resonance there that so many of us, even people who hadn't been, you know, in this field, I've been doing this stuff for a while, but people who were just kind of coming onto it and you're talking about, you know, star families and star lineages and star seeds. So there was a, it was a, I think a big, had a big effect on the collective in a sense. You know, because I'm sure some of your videos got millions of views, right? On TikTok, yeah. On TikTok, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So you're, you know, you're having this effect, and you're not sharing your full story as we are today. So there's this the resonance that people are finding. So I'm just curious that that sort of journey of going into that world, and then you, so you came back from that world, and you started talking about it. What? How did yeah. that? How was your reaction? How do you put that into words, and how do you get people? to understand what happened. Mm -hmm. I know we're doing that here now, but what was some of the earlier experiences that you had from mm -hmm. that sharing? Yeah, at one hand people, because I had a YouTube channel before, it was mm -hmm. called The Magnificent Future. So then I opened that YouTube channel as Marcel met each other. So in 2017, circa, I started with this one. Okay. So, and there were already many people watching me. So, and they were very worried because they were members of my Telegram channel and they saw what happened there. So, <laughs> suddenly I was gone. Oh, so, okay. And, and so, I, so in yeah. this reality, you disappeared. 
yeah, because it was not easy for me to talk about this. Like, oh my gosh, how should I explain this to the people without people who live? I'm going crazy. So maybe you just took some mushrooms or LSD. <laughs> right. That would have been my first guess, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I simply did it. So I opened up the channel. I was a little bit afraid because I also saw who's watching us, the people in the black car and, and all this. So, and it was very crazy as I published that video. Immediately, these people entered my live stream. Immediately. Which is a scam. Don't believe her. It's right, her right. same guys again. So, whoa. Wow. Like, I already know that I opened up a YouTube channel again. Okay. But there were many people that were very worried about me. So, and they were guided to me. And even people, as I opened up the app again, Telegram, you know, and I had a phone again, you know. Yeah. So I was also in contact with people private. These were IT contactees, channelers. And they were very worried because they received a message. Oh, shit. They are in danger. Marcel and Sandra, they are in horrible danger. And they prayed for me. And they prayed and they tried to help me, you know. So that was the reaction in first case. It was mixed. Mm -hmm. One side, they were very worried because they felt it was very dark. That mm -hmm. is not, Sandra would never do this. To say goodbye, you know, nothing pushed them. She's gone. But this is not her style. So right. the other side were the beings from below Astro plane again. Oh, Jesus, damn, don't breathe. We're in Jesus, Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then I... Did it anyway, and then a YouTube channel was guided to me again. He also watched my previous YouTube channel, and his name is Lordy Bieber, but he's not on YouTube any longer. So mm. I heard they deleted his videos too. I don't know if it's true, but Lordy Bieber, he had a big YouTube channel. He was guided to me again because he already watched my channel, and he explained in all detail what happened there. And the video is still online on my YouTube channel because they removed that video from his channel too. But luckily, I saved it on my computer. <laughs> mm. That's why I re-uploaded it. Yeah. And, and is that as I watched that video, I was like, oh my gosh, she explains everything in detail. So I felt that this is something else, but I couldn't find words for all this. I can't mm -hmm. explain this. And then many people were guided to me again because they subscribed to Naughty Beaver's channel too. Yeah. Okay. And is that, is that on your YouTube channel? Yeah. On my YouTube uh, channel. Okay. I I'll, -uploaded I'll, it. I'll have to find that and post it here. Sorry. Well, so, so the evolution sort of continues. So were you familiar with the men in black or had you known other than the movie? Did you know any details about those beings or those yeah. entities? Because they're sort of non-human. Many people say they look human, but not really. Yeah, yeah. Non-human NPCs, AI, Android, so to speak. These are shapeshifters, the dark ones, right? They put on a physical body, for example. So it was a little bit similar to me, like the movie they do. When you know the movie. Oh, yeah, 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 with the glasses. Same yeah. feeling for me. Yeah. The same feeling. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, after that spending time in there and now coming out. So now you can, we can all, we, and we have terms for this. Did you know about the splitting of the earth and the sort of different direction, different timelines? And did you have that sort of vernacular before going into that experience? Mm -hmm. I was aware okay. of this before and I already published content about this. Yeah. Okay. So, so you had some navigation points. You were kind yeah. of fig figuring it out that you were like, okay, did we jump timelines? Are we in another reality? Yeah, um, I just saw, okay, slowly we got to stay way higher. The gate to the fourth dimension opened. So at first I didn't understood the message. Okay. But after we escaped, so to speak, I understood mm -hmm, the way. Right. <laughs> and yeah, so what's the takeaway? What's the big message from that experience? Always trust your heart mm -hmm. because our heart saved us, so to speak. We saw right. that these things, they don't understand your heart. Uh uh. They don't understand your soul. They're very good in translating your brain, your mind, programs, frequency, but they don't understand your soul. And they don't understand your intuition. This means when you trust your intuition, you are divine protective and mm. you can navigate through the storm. Yeah, that sort of seems to be a theme, you know, clearly through this great change, this transformation that humanity is going through. The, the key theme that keeps coming up through, you know, all of my you know, interviews and 
talks with the galactics, they're saying, you know, trust your heart, trust your heart, trust your heart, right? That's the, the, this, in a sense of the new operating system. I know it's sort of the old operating system, but to go into that energy, lean in that direction, and that'll sort of be the guidance to keep us in the, the best timeline possible, right? In a sense for our evolution and for our, for, I guess, for uh, those of us who are tuning in here for, to be the best version of us that we want, you know, that we desire. Um, and more and more that message continues to get stronger and these types of conversations and, you know, you sharing your experiences again, it's just coming through very strong. When for you, did you start the, the singing in the light language? I think it has started as myself and we met each other. Okay. 2017, I was slowly guided to sing and speak in light language. It was a message from my team again. (laughs) Yeah. That I would all receive messages basically through my intuition. So then I simply do it what they tell me. So they also told me I start with English content for a few years. And I was like, really? Me speaking English? Are you kidding, right? <laughs> Are you kidding? They said, simply try it. And then I published the first one. It was a light language video, right? The intro was English, German, you know? <laughs> then I sung uh, in speaking Syrian light language, yes. Okay. Did it. And then it was so much fun to do it. And then I did more of them. So and more and more people, English speaking people were guided to me. So then I understood, oh, see, my team is right. <laughs> I have no idea why. Some questions here in the chat already. Oh, okay. Yeah. But go ahead. Let's see. What do we have? Oh, Jessica's asking, where was the version of you here? What were you doing here? Yeah. Uh, in that sense, yeah. Maybe there was yeah. only one version. I don't know. Yeah, one version. So I'm not I'm a candidate for the for real. So I didn't see myself walking around in the whole dimension, no. But I yeah. Queen, for example, walking. You saw what? Queen Elizabeth was there. She was in the other dimension? <laughs> was Maybe, yeah. Wait, when did she die? She died in this reality. She died <laughs> a few months ago, was it? It wasn't that long ago, right? Not fully a year ago, was it? I don't know. My my whole time awareness has <laughs> gone out the window as well as we're moving so fast. So you did you physically see her in the Yeah, she was standing next to me. What? Okay. Yeah. Or just her I energy. Just recognized her. She wore a skirt, her hat, you know, her hair. And she had this teeth, you know, like like a Draco. Right? <laughs> and her eyes it went yeah. gosh. She had white blue colored eyes. There's no pupils, nothing. Just, you know, the eye is just like, of course, what? that's her higher self, I think. Wow. Her higher self, I cannot say. And she, she was standing next to me at the train station. Yeah. She was very creepy. In 40. <laughs> Even in 40. Yeah. So, so I guess following up, Jessica's asking, so your physical body was still here. And I guess we're saying, you're saying no, your physical body, like you were missing for, you know, friends and family could not oh, find you. I was missing. Yeah, they couldn't find me. Oh. So Alana's saying, you know, did you see Trump? <laughs> a version yeah. of Trump. You did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, tell us about that. It's very complicated with them, to be honest. I feel okay. on one hand, I'm not allowed to speak so much. Okay. So listening, you know. Sure. But yeah, they created many entities of him in 4D. And you saw very clear, they're all on like oh, right. so many yeah. NPCs are working around there. And you know, they created him in a very strange way. So they all wear a cap, make America great again, you know? Yeah, the red hat, so they, yeah. Yeah, of course, or did, that he drank a bottle of beer, for example, or that he took a seat in a wheelchair, he couldn't walk for real, and he couldn't talk. And then I told myself, see, they all don't like him. So I knew it before, so they don't like There were different versions of Trump that you saw, like sitting in a wheelchair? And- yeah. Yeah, and they, they look totally different. Or they made huh. face of him. Couldn't open his eyes. Oh, gosh, guys. Look what are you doing with him? <laughs> wow. Interesting. Huh. I'm wondering what how that all works. So you're calling in the guides during this time. And what are the guides? How are they guiding you through this? I over and over received the masters. It's complicated to help. It's not easy to help you. So, oh, shit. Okay, what are they doing? And I saw just very crazy technology and grids they use like almost impossible to get out of there very strange and as mentioned a few times i saw a hand something like they tried to push destroy the grid 
And it also felt like a lot that we are in auto matrix too. You know, and Naughty Beaver explained that. He said that they copied our reality with their AI technology. That's what Naughty explained. Like we were really walking in a, a, a matrix too, with the very real. Mm. And they tried to help us, what I saw, it was not easy for them. And sometimes, yes, they appeared as entities too. So that they hacked into, and these were showmen too. And it looked like, yeah, these are the Pleiadians. So because most of them, they have blue eyes and blonde hair, but basically they wore purple colored clothing because most of them, they were blue or red. And that was very weird as well. Just NPCs wearing blue or red colored clothes. So, and sometimes when they hacked into, then they wore purple clothes. So, and they were kind to us, but these were all NPCs. It was very weird. Mm. They sometimes navigated us. So, and told us where to go or when we had no idea where we at, for example, or no train arrived, for example, that's what they did do, or. You know, we had a push, a time shift, and we were located in another city. Suddenly, so what the fuck, you know? So then sometimes they appeared and they navigated us. So, or that they told us where the train station is or where to go next. So that's what they did. And they sometimes appeared too, and they shapeshifted in front of us. It was very weird. Perfect. Your guides, right? The guides uh, were, were yeah. sort of coming in different forms. Yeah. Yes. And I received this word of the item, yes. Basically mm -hmm. from 5D, yeah. Okay, and they were sort of helping you navigate through this crazy time. Because they're also very close to us, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in 4D and 5D is above us, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, fascinating. Charmaine has a question. Hop in there, Charmaine. Hey, thanks, Ruben. Yeah, and thanks, Akira, for being here today and sharing your story. It's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was, yeah, I was watching your TikTok videos and I was curious, your voice is just so beautiful, so piercing and angelic. I was curious if you had any training, any formal training, like voice training or musical training. No. Oh, okay. No. Wow. No. Yeah, I know. It was so, very interesting. Oh, thank you so, okay. so much. Yeah. For your lovely compliment. Yeah, no, I just do what I feel in my heart, but. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I really felt that heart connection when you shared with the TikTok videos I watched. It was interesting. The whole vibration of my space changed. My dog kind of freaked out and started running around. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thank you. Happy and honored. Yeah. So I will keep going. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Charmaine. Yeah. I would, I call it light language opera, right? So it's, it is uh, my cats too. They respond to that. My, uh, my wife does some opera like sounds for them and they like that. So I was playing some of your stuff and then they seem to respond to, yeah, animals oh, cool. for yeah. sure. Are, they're getting the vibes. So let's bring it to current day. So we're experiencing these solar flares, you know, constantly. And what are you, what kind of downloads are you getting in and around the, these flares that are happening right now. And I think that's why my connection, like we were yesterday doing a C5 and Bluetooth was bugging out. You know, we've been, and I've noticed that on heavy days, heavy solar flare days, Bluetooth bugs out, the electronics start to sort of go wonky. And perhaps that's just what happened here with my thing. So for you, for trans, what does that translate to you as far as the energy and, and vibration? No. I over and over received the same message. It's just about open your heart, activate your crystal and DNA. So as you mentioned, we operate completely different soon. So, you know, for us, it was normal. Just trust your brain and your mm -hmm. mind. But now we go back into our hearts. And when you trust your intuition, you create just from your heart, from your intuition. And you just surrender to the divine. Yes, and we are all in this together because even we star seeds, for example, we also raised in that high check matrix. So, and we carry beliefs programs till day. And when the solar flares are hitting, it's like you're confronted over and over again with your deepest shadows, with your fear, with your traumas again, and you must face it. So that's what I notice. And it also depends on which flare hits what I notice. I oh, okay. From myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, when unclassed solar flares are hitting, I'm very emotional, very mm. emotional. I'm angry. I'm in tears. Yeah. So I'm very emotional. 
when X plus all of theirs are hitting that support, there's the other link. <laughs> Like oh. you, you have no feeling anymore. So what time it is, what day it is. I'm mm -hmm. so crazy. Astro projections, so crazy dreams. I cannot sleep. It's very strange. <laughs> X plus on that nerve are very powerful. Yeah. So I see, to be honest, I don't know this time for real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Are C's sort of the weakest ones or? Yeah. What are we, what's, I think what's going on right now? I think, was it, is it an X class? We've had some big ones. Yeah. Mini M. Okay. So emotions are getting yeah, uh, many activated. emotions. And your mom as well is like we are always so emotional. Sure. Uh, Schumann resonance is off the charts. Yeah, I've been noticing that too. There's these giant spikes that are continuing yeah. to yeah. to go. Charmaine's asking, how do we know the difference with the flares? And I think they're you know they're reported on if you follow like space weather or some of those things. They do say what what types of flares and the size. I heard yesterday we got there was a giant flare that came off the sun and if it was pointed to towards the earth luckily it's not going to hit earth that it's one of those sort of carrington events it would have destroyed earth so that's how active the sun is right now there's a few of these where we've woo, dodged bullets where the sun has ejected some pretty intense flares that luckily are not aimed at us but there are ones aimed at us that we are getting as well just not in the that intensity so with all this solar activity, are we? Is do you th is this the rewriting of the operating system? Are we getting upgraded here with recoded, the? Yes, recoded. Yes, yeah. Our DNA is being activated. We detach from the false matrix, so to speak. You know, we mm -hmm. also have a divine matrix. So, and we just got access to the divine matrix again, which is your heart. Mm. In the first case, it's your heart that you really trust your intuition again. First, like you become a child a little bit. <laughs> Right. There's a there's an innocence to it for sure. Yeah, yeah, and there's like, really a lot going on, you know. Also, when you see the sound of freedom is out now, yeah, you know, what what's going on? The craziness, so much chaos everywhere, and I also feel horrible attacks. To be honest, it's like they they all go crazy. Okay, like in the, I felt yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot of healing and purging taking place too at the moment. It's pretty pretty intense. Right, right. There, I mean, it's interesting. Even the news, you know, how let me see if I can pull it up here. It's, it's just, you know, I sort of talked on Friday about this movie, and there's some. It's just there's a lot of oddness around this movie. I haven't seen it yet. It's playing. It's playing yeah. here. I might go see it soon. But the attacks from the media seem to be quite intense. You, we've never seen this in a movie like this. Like, why are people? Why is for example, why is Rolling Stone uh, putting out this type of why anti-trafficking experts are torching Sound of Freedom? You know, so mm -hmm. there's some they're putting it out there like it's like it's some sort of it's weird. It's just weird how oh so here it is free. Th this is what Rolling Stone called movie for dads with brain worms. Yeah, so yeah, I saw this. Yeah. And, and you're just like what. Why is the media going after going after this sort of thing? It's sort of, it, 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 you know, I understand. We understand why it's happening, but it's just, it's like, it's be, it's so obvious now that if the media is attacking a film like this, that's really just, you know, a film, if it came out to five years ago, nobody would say anything. It's just like, okay, it's another film, great film, whatever. So, so your feeling that this movie is sort of having, making ripples in the collective? It shines light onto the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Like simply turn the lights on again. Every time we turn the lights on, bash the undisputed of the darkness right. follows. Yeah. And that's why we feel so much darkness again, sliding. Because we just shine light onto this. Yes. And that's why I feel it's very wild at the moment in many attacks. Also myself. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, you know, I started going down some of these rabbit holes. During that, you know, when Pizzagate was just coming out with the uh, WikiLeaks files coming out and then and the people sort of connecting the dots uh, around Pizzagate, which was like 2016, I want to think, 2017. So I started going down those rabbit holes then and I, you know, understood the intenseness of, of that, the, this, that world, right? It's its own dimension in a sense, but it is part of our dimension to a certain extent. So we're bringing that as a collective, you know, we're bringing that uh, to the surface to, I guess, 
banish or cast out these types of negative energies. Like we, they can't exist. They can't coexist in the same space, right? They'll exist in their other timeline in a sense, right? They, so, so it is, it is intense for people. And I guess one of my warnings, you know, that I'm wondering your take on this is we have to be a little bit careful because uh, what I know, what I see is some people that get a hold of this information, most people are able to sort of shine the light. They see it. They're they're able to say, okay, this is this needs to stop. We need to put our foot down and we need to make a stand and never let this happen again. Right. And that's sort of the healthy way to to address the situation. There are though the extreme side of things, and this is unfortunately where some of the hardcore Trumpers go in there and then they then it all becomes about revenge and getting, you know, taking out the bad guys. And we want, we understand that has to happen, but the energy seems, it's the almost that same energy, this attacking, we're going to get revenge. And it's become so, I've seen people where it gets so, they're so consumed by that, that the, the rage and the anger and the fear sort of overtake them. So it's almost the same energy reflected back in a sense. So- yeah. So I sort of put that disclaimer out there because even though this is shining the light on a lot of, of these darker agendas, it can easily go back into a dark agenda if we let that other sort of revenge, that energy consume us and get so angry. And there are groups of people that if you can, you know, harness and focus that energy in a positive sense, like Tim Ballard, who's going after, you know, and doing these things in a positive sense. And when I've seen his interviews, he seems very, you know, calm and centered and this is his mission and that's awesome. But some people can't hold that too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I try to see the good in it as well. Yeah. There are so many people all over the world who never heard about. Yeah. So when I see the energy in general in Germany, like almost no one talks about it. Oh, right. How that Europe was keeping it too. There's almost a sense of denial, right? It's, they don't want to, well, in that sense, it, because it's almost too much, I think for some people, yeah. and this is where, you know, the news sort of plays on that side of things is like, yeah, it's all made up. It's all, you know, because that's a comfortable place to be, to, uh, to, to not call it out and to sort of say, oh, that doesn't exist. And it's, and it may not be your battle. And if it's not, then don't, you know, you don't need to go there. But for many, it is. So, so yeah, Jessica saying, be aware and don't get sucked in. Yeah, that's totally, I think, what, what, uh, what we need to do is, yeah, have that awareness around it. Because that's sort of, it's the lack of awareness around all of these subjects. You know, the UFO subject, the hiding of the technology, the, uh, the darker agendas. You know, these, they hide in the shadows, you know, mm-hmm. these agendas. So without the awareness, they're able to exist. If we can bring awareness to them and say, no... <laughs> You, you cannot do that. Sorry. You know, time out. And then that stuff can sort of cease to exist in our reality. So it's kind of a, it's a tricky, it's a tricky thing because, you know, if you don't want to over-focus on it, because then you invite that into your reality. So it's like yeah. that catch 22, you know, you have the awareness, but don't go too far. And it's, a, it's a balancing act and, yeah. and we want to fix things right away. You know, we want to sort of get to the root of the issue and fix it. But sometimes that hyper focus of trying to fix the problem only can sort of perpetuate and put us into that uh, darker, those darker spaces, which may be what we need, you know, as a, a, to do that internal work, to look at our reflections in us, to see what's off balance and why am I getting triggered over this? Is it something that, is there something in me that, that I need to look at that's triggering me? So there's a lot of rabbit holes we can go down. But I say use caution because sometimes it's not always us individually. There, you know, there's collective stories like this that are collective wounds. And there are aspects, there are reflections and fractals of that in our internal that, that, you know, get activated and we need to use those to look at it. But again, you know, proceed with caution, everybody. There's, there's a lot of cleanup, energetic cleanup that has to happen on this planet and, uh, and it's happening. You know, it's great that we're seeing this type of stuff. I call it the period of transition. Mm. It's just letting go of everything, which is not serving us anymore. Yeah, bringing awareness to this. We started to know we absorb 
a lot. Like when you dive into this too much, suddenly you absorb the energies and then you have the same feeling, the same thoughts, and, and you feel miserable. So we start to yeah. remain stay centered. Yeah, because yep. we absorb a lot of these energies, you know, and we catalyze the energies and so on. So yeah, I also try to balance it out the best as I can. Yeah. Sure. And that's really going back to that heart energy is, is so it mm-hmm. seems like that's the, the other side of the scale on that side of balancing it out to neutralize any sort of heavy sadness or depression or, you know, those, you go into that reality and it, it's, it is rough. So, so any tools you can give us to, to help us navigate that, we're gladly take them. I think, you know, your light language and voice. So maybe we should head into that direction now and then. And then we'll, we'll finish with that, with some good light language and music. If you're to lighten up the situation, so to say, lighten up the talk. Yeah, we can. Let's do it. Many times I translate the energy from the central sun, because in first case, we are just anchoring the crystal in house now from the sun. So I dive into the energy. So let's come back into our bodies and feel this one moment and feel your heart feel your heart beat take a deep breath down into your belly you are divinely protected you are loved you are guided everything works for us not against us So letting go, letting go of all the heaviness and stay in your heart space. Take a deep breath and breathe out again. Shiva Ura, Gelisimiria, Yamuya Tanese, Kia Aito, Yokuha Marai, Talai Teneraya. You are protected, Alitimiria Kitin Kionosoro, Sinitia no Kosoro. Life works for you, Kitinikia Kutuno Tara, Sisneria Aitano Lokumo Rotea. Trust your intuition, she looked in a Sakiri Kilnitama. It's a Mikisitan and Yatanakari Kiano Kosimiri Kinia, Philippine Trust your intuition, she will be a summary of the Mohama. Aksari Kiana Tuya Natin say a lot on the Raya. Feel the connection to your soul as soon as it is a roy. The Moko Dara like Tassi. Kokama Dara like an item, so is the only Tiki. The Moroya Katan Rain is in the final. You're protected, little Nasiri Kyanoko Taya. You're protected, little Remi Kotana Tama Saya. Children, we should not share your eyes with the Maya. Hi, little Nasiri Kyanoko Taya. You're protected, little Remi Kotana Tama Saya. Children, we should not share your eyes with the Maya. Be honest with yourself, little Nasiri Kyanoko Taya. Because you're not a 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 Build a connection to the divine thing to the Kiano Kosa, Sesni, Itisin, Tsarai, Tanaseria, Tunumu Tarik, Kotun Roy Kiani, Tama Sanaya, Kotun Sanaya Kiani. Now I'm downloading the codes from the Sanko Sun to the Kinasi. Build a connection to me, this and me. Letting go, letting go, letting go. Let the connection be so new, let us say. Release the finitimiet and the sorrow, let us say. Kai ikinasa. 
Don't be afraid, Alama Sanaya. Have faith, Sanitikini Tiria. Ita Moesinia. You are prepared, Akai Litini, Rikia no Kotono Matarik in Seya. From your crown chakra down to your root chakra, from your root chakra up to your crown chakra, Activate your twelve strength DNA, Litinitinere, Kiamatanaya. Hold the connection to the divine, Litinisiria, Pikiana Tamoya, Aitiki, Lissinisa, Roya, Atamaxitit, Astanere, Kianitanamalit, Seatisu, Roy Kianach, Baiku, Roy, Ikianat, Analetis. Access to your highest timeline, Vitini Sinareya, Vikyani Soyanaya, stay focused on your earth, Latini Kireya, Atamu Soya, Aitini Sinareya, access to your highest timeline, Vitini Soya, stay in your heart, Alatari, surrender, Akutuno Roy, Itini Soya, Latini Kini Soya, you are protected, Akalatiria, Mighty Soya, your guides are with you, Hamiliti, Tinisiri, Kyokuch, Tinoroi, Kili, Tamaya.
tini sanga ya Yodi anatu from five feet aura ala tini so ya Stay focused on your earth li hikini kamuroi Remember, Elita my reiki ni kisaya. Remember your home, Elita ni kamasaya. It lives in you. Hama katareta ni saya. Embody it now. Aku koroi aeti ni ma kasimiwa. Don't be afraid, Elita ni. Siti ni kumi ni kamai kasiki atari. Hamoto no soya. Delisa ni ma. Hold the connection with the kiri kanaya. Access to house timeline. The wish me to be sure. The wish me to be sure that the answer is coming. The divinely guided Akurokiri Amaya Spirit. Come back into your physical body, so yeah. Take a deep breath down into your belly. Take a deep breath into your belly. Hold the connection to the divine. You are protected with Anything works for you. This is the Aritama. You to go to the Aritama. Thank you. Done now. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> so what's uh, what's happening there when you're doing these transmissions? How is it uh, how does it show up for you? I see many pictures. But I see many times angel, I see golden light many times, golden golden colors, golden light. I saw the Aquarius too. Oh okay. I saw the Lauren this time as well. So mm. I received pictures. Yeah. Then I just translate what I see and I just go with the flow. Beautiful. Yeah, well, we can feel it for sure. You definitely have a gift there with bringing these transmissions, these energies through. 
Thank you very much. I'm very honored. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just curious now that we've sort of felt that and experienced that, guys, if anybody wants to chime in to share what you've thought or felt, anybody want to chime in? I, I felt it in my heart, literally a vibration, like a humming coming from my chest area here. So Christine, yeah, hop in. Thank you so much, Akuril. That was beautiful. Thank you. And yeah, thank you. I, I wanted to thank you for what you shared about the solar flares, because for one solid week from July 5 to 12, I was deep into shadow work. Like I was pulled into it and then boop, popped out of it. Yeah. So, so thank you. That helps me understand that. I was really beating myself up about it. And I'm like, where did that come from? Yeah, um, pretty intense. Yeah. It is intense. And your singing was just so lovely. And I want to thank you. You've solved a mystery for me. I've been moved to sing like that for a number of years and I have been by myself. And now I'm like, okay, someone else is doing it. So I'm going to keep doing it here too. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you also very much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for seeing. Uh, Catherine, why don't you hop in here? Hey, Coralyn. So nice to meet you. Well, I've been following you on social for less than a year, but I'm, it's like, I saw you were on the call today. I got really excited. So, and that was oh, beautiful. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. I, first, yeah. the first note that you hit, it was insane because that very first note that hit my entire left side went in massive goosebumps and my eye went and my whole head felt like this like static buzz on top, which was like, I was like, what? And it was so amazing. And I just felt like I was instantly in, in like that altered trance state. And I was interesting was I was noticing that I wanted to kind of sing along with you a little bit. Like there was moments uh -huh. where I was toning with you and harmonizing with you. And uh -huh. you know, I was trying not to judge. I'm like, just go with it. Just go with it. <laughs> Thank you for the share. Did you ever see pictures? Again? Energies, colors. Did you see pictures? No, images, no, no I would like to open up the uh -huh. that more because I I've only had one time where I saw a yoga teacher I was working with. I saw a halo over her mm -hmm. head, which I was oh. like, you know, I was like, <laughs> so cool. But I would love to keep opening that. So I want to keep going. Cool. Yeah, keep going. Amazing. Thank you so much. For Thank you. Hey, thanks, Catherine. <laughs> So, Akura, have you done have you done your singing in any type of churches or chambers or acoustic no. halls or anything like that? No, no um, I felt it since childhood. So when I was a child, I saw mm -hmm. an opera. So, but I had a very interesting childhood. So I was not allowed to sing. So, <laughs> wow, I became older. So then I did it again. Yeah, and I simply did it. But yeah. I always wanted to sing in opera. And I wanted to play the piano as well in childhood. Have you seen the movie? Let's see, it's been a while. A Solaris, I think it's called. It's a, yeah. You, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. There's there's cosmic opera sound. Uh, just your voice reminded me of that soundtrack. I love it. You, oh, okay. Of course. Oh, great. So you know what I'm talking about. That's It's been a while. James Cameron produced it. George Clooney, yes. some other. Yeah, um, I love that kind of music. Or, oh, sweet. Um, Zimmer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is it Hound Zimmer? Is that I think. from hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some good ones in there. Cool. I'd love if you ever get inspired or get a, a chance to do your music in a hall. I'd, I'm curious just how it would reverberate. Like, can you imagine you being in a king's yeah. chamber or something like that in, in Egypt? Yeah. In yeah, the king's yeah, or queen's chamber doing your voice? Like, that would be, oh, yeah. Corey just said interesting that you interesting that you mentioned this because yeah. for myself in a past life, yes. And that's right, I was a singer. <laughs> oh right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> the past there you go. Teacher. Yeah. Maybe it comes from there. <laughs> yeah, if you ever get a chance to get in inside the King's Chamber or some of these halls, definitely make sure you have a recording device and <laughs> record it and then when you're done, send it to me right away. Hey, cool. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. I'm going. Yeah. Excellent. So much fun thing. 
We're doing a, so I have another sort of side thing. It's in the membership here called the Raw Files. And there's a woman who's wanting to remain anonymous, but she does channelings for the raw energy. And there's a tone that she's produced that is resonant to some of the sounds that you create. And then I sent that over to my friend, David Serrata, who's a frequency master, and he did some tests on it and it's getting some interesting results. So I'm sort of thinking that maybe you're in that range of, of frequencies that might have some interesting effects because we're all feeling it, right? We're all sort of, yeah. so yeah, I wonder what the- Yeah, struggling a little bit with the editing, so. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. I have to figure it out how it works, but the sound quality, I want to improve. Yeah, I would look into that. Maybe we can which you <laughs> guide you in some with some of our sound people and technical th- sides of things. I'll give you yeah, a hand thank there. You. So thank you. I'll do what I can. Right here, Michelle. Bye to meet you and have you here thank you so much yeah it's a little bit new for me so wow i talked to the (laughs) to all the members here yeah it's a nice little conversation thank you i was curious when you had your experience of being in the other dimension you felt a trust right away or that came about later of knowing that you'll go back to your old reality or your real reality did you have a trust because it lasted so long a month is a very long time to be in that space and do you feel like you your trust and following your heart got you out of that or was it just a mm-hmm. time that was meant to last a certain amount of experience for you to be honest marcel knew we will get out of there you always mm-hmm. told me don't worry we will find a way we will mm-hmm. always find a way that was marcel's very centered and strong in this reality. So I was very emotional, to be honest. I cried. I was it ever end. I want to get out of there, right? So I cried, but he was very centered and very strong. Yeah. But if within I knew it is guided or we have to go through this, it was, it's hard to explain this, but deep within we knew, yes, we will get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. But for self, to be honest, he was very centered. And he always over told me, don't worry, he will find a way, I'm sure. Yeah. So, and our intuition guided us always. And that was very wild to say, yeah. When you trust your first feeling, you're so much faster to a destructive thing, you know. So, what we saw is they're very good in understanding your mind, your program, your frequency. But they have problems to understand your soul. They cannot. It means when you follow your intuition, you receive a message straight in your heart, then you're all so much faster. Yeah. And you create the divine matrix there. Yeah. So, and to train just your psychic muscle. That's been a big message for me to tap, to lead with my heart. Yeah. You know, listen to my body. And imagination is one way been told to start listening to my heart because I'm so analytical and left brain. I've shut off the channel of imagination because it's not right or wrong. It's more loose. And so following into my imagination has been very difficult. Absolutely the right path to follow. Yeah, you can work a lot with your imagination too. So especially when you practice telekinesis, for example. Mm-hmm. So imagination is key. Or you also can use your imagination to shield your aura, to protect your energy, for example. So you can do a lot with your pineal gland too. Yeah. Yeah. So what I feel our heart is the gate beneath the door, so to speak. <laughs> so the cosmos into your higher self. And what I also notice is through your heart space, you are connected to all dimensions. So it's like your heart is the gate to all dimensions. So it's actually very simple. So, and it's so fascinating for me to watch children. Those children are so authentic, <laughs> pure, and they just do it. So they don't question it. So, yeah, I believe slower return. So we are really all in this together. So. And that's what I tell my community over and over again. We are really all in this together. I also feel the savior victim program exists too. 
I don't know if you see the same in the spiritual community, like don't give your power away to a guru any longer because you are your own guru, so <laughs> to speak. Yeah, that's what I observe a lot. And yeah, maybe it's hurtful to her because it is, it, this was the way, right? During a long time, we gave our power away to the teacher, to the manager, parents. So yeah, that's also a deep, deep programming, I feel. And this also connects us now. So everything is divinely guided, so to speak. There is always a divine plan behind everything we cannot understand. So, and I feel the more we go that is sanctioned, the more we feel the energy from the divine. So we come closer to the divine. That's it. <laughs> yeah, we are really all in this together. So me, myself, I'm the process. Even when I do the slide code activations or when I have a social media, channel so i see we are all in this and i'm still learning always in training so it's still purging and healing <laughs> so yeah i feel my opinion this is new earth that we need each other this everyone on the same level we can learn from each other so i don't know if you can agree but that's how i see it i see some comments here when did this happen to you akura Catherine asks, do you talk about the fourth dimension or? Yeah. Yes, when you got stuck for a month. Like, when did that happen? And then I wanted to ask about is it more? I remember it was slowly. It started with an eyeball in April. I think at the end of April, the beginning of May, slowly we got captured there. Yeah, yeah. So they stopped us first. Yeah, black helicopters surrounded us over and over again. Then People which took a seat in a black car that were over and over in front of our house. Very weird, yeah. And then as we run, so to speak, and we tried to visit my family's house, then these people follow us, took a train, and then they captured us, yes, with their technology. So I cannot explain to you how it works, but yeah, we were there. So I think May 2021, we were there. 21. Okay. So like two, two years ago, oh. two years ago. Yeah. That's crazy. And tell me, is, and Marcel is your life partner, your husband. Yeah, we are twin plans, so to speak. <laughs> okay. And you guys have been yeah. together for like a long time or six years now almost. Yeah. <laughs> and you do, does he channel like you? He channels different. He is very heart centered. He just trust his intuition. So yeah. he received messages through his heart. He's a little bit different and he is good in telepathy. He reads my mind <laughs> in every detail. Yeah, he's a little bit different. He gets people down to the core. So this, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you also very much. So Akura, is there anything you can do to help or support you? How do you recharge? Thanks for your work and courage. Oh, Alana, thank you so much. How should I explain this? Thank you. I'm already so happy when people tell me they are in tears or they are touched by my work, to be honest. So or when you send me comments, so you already helped me so much. Yeah. So do whatever you feel in your heart, because I believe your heart tells you what to do. So you also can send prayers if you feel like, yeah. So just do what your heart tells you, then I think it's the right decision. But thank you very much for asking, yeah. So it seems like, Alana, you know a little bit more what's going on. <laughs> yes, you know? Yeah. Yeah, maybe you know that we moved recently and that we live in a new apartment. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, we already do better because of this. <laughs> <laughs> now we live in a new apartment, yeah. So yeah, we would simply keep going the best as we can. Yeah. So I just know these attacks are pretty wild since this movie is out to that. I don't know if you feel this too, guys, but I feel very crazy energy since the movie Sound of Freedom. So it's so dark as well. Very dark, but very light. It's like, yeah, the darkness comes up to the surface again. And it's all went over the same, so don't be surprised when solar flares are heating 
or if the Schumann resonance is off the chart, the darkness always follows. So maybe it's a good, you're so excited. And one day later, yeah, you feel like you're a mashed potato <laughs> because yeah, <laughs> the darkness always follows. <laughs> and Lama is laughing. Yes, it's over and over the same. Yeah, the darkness always follows the light. So don't be surprised when this happens. We just heal and purge darkness out. So. Yeah, and we stir it, you know, we absorb a lot. So that's what I notice about myself. So when I spend too much time in starting the rabbit hole, I feel very strange. So what the fuck is this? So I feel very weird and strange. <laughs> I absorb the energy. So that's why ground yourself the best as you can do. That's what I do every day. I spend every day time in the woods. Every day. Or I walk with barefoot in the woods. So in that just try to stay grounded and I cleanse my aura and my body every day. It's really important for us because really you absorb so much. You absorb the drama from your neighbor. You absorb the drama in other countries. You absorb so much. That's why, yeah, do this. Then you are very centered and strong and you're not confused. Because many star seeds and spiritual people I see, they are beyond confused at the moment. They don't know what to believe anymore. This is true. Is it fake? Is it good to channel or is it evil to channel? Are these my true friends or all these blue beam holograms? So I don't know. Maybe you see the same, but there's a lot of confusion taking place at the moment. So when you stay centered in your heart, you are not confused because still it's straight in your heart what to do and you receive the messages from the divine. So, and we are all in this together. So we just walk through this and that's why I say over and over we are on the period of transition. So my opinion. So, and I cannot say for sure how long it will take to be honest. Because I know many people are waiting for a global disclosure. You know what I'm talking about. It's visible for everyone. So and I really cannot say when. It seems like the people have it in their hands. And they must go for this process. That's what I see. And all we can do is unite. That's the message I over and over receive from my Octarians. Unite. Physical contact. Yeah, join communities, events that we come together in real, right? And we have and support each other a lot. And stay focused on your earth and see what you can do now to make your earth a better place. So what can you do now? And you will see every person is needed. So be it so small, like you smile or you say hi to your neighbor, but you already start to make your earth a lighter place. So every single person is important and needed. So and I received the message over and over again, we must coming together. I talk about real events, physical events, and yeah, maybe it will be chaotic soon because the craziness continues when you watch the system, when you observe the collective. I feel this is the beginning. And when we are coming together, even here, maybe you already feel the energy is like we are so centered, so grounded, and there is no confusion. Like, yes, I know. I feel the energy from my soul tribe here. So we just have each other. So really, and we do powerful good work together. So when we start seeing or coming together, maybe you notice the same that we do powerful good work together and we protect each other. And that's what I also see for us. So I don't know what you see, but that's what I feel is the process of us. And at the moment, maybe you see the same, many people choose war, even in the spiritual community. So why all this war and fight and division, and blame and shame? So wow, so actually it's about coming together now and helping each other. And having compassion for each other, you know, because we are really all in this. So, and when a person has a good heart, I prefer to see this, to be honest, because everyone carries wounds and traumas. So, I don't know what you felt, but this is my message to you when it's about what can we do now to do better. 
So always trust your intuition. When your intuition tells you, hey, I want to be in contact with my soul tribe. So try to find an event or a community or go to Sedona or wherever <laughs> and try to do it. Yeah, because you really do so much better when you see more starcy or more impulse like Really, that's what I notice every time when I'm in contact with others. So you are so much stronger. You feel centered and grounded in your aura. It's so much stronger than before. I don't know what you feel, but that's what I see for us in future. But I really cannot say what happens with the collective because many people ask what's going on, what happens to them. I really cannot say it. Just to me like in their own home. They hold the sector, so to speak, without not seeing this <laughs> at the moment. A powerful every being in. So, and be just an inspiration. Because when you show up, speak, even when your voice shakes, speak. Even when you're not accurate 100%, look at me, I'm not a native speaker. <laughs> I write speak English anyway, because my heart tells me this. So I do it because my heart tells me this. So it's good the way it is. So show up anyway. So because the right people, they will always support you and we are all coming together and imagine the more star seeds and spirit, spiritual people show up, the more the collective sees us too. You know, the AI algorithm changes as well on social media, for example. And when more and more people talk about their ET encounters or about astrology, so then they are more open-minded all this and they are also coming to us. So. That's what I see too. So don't be afraid to show up. Don't tell yourself it's not good enough, right? So it is good enough. So do it. Do what your heart tells you. So you know what to do. And this is the message I over and over received from my guides, from my over and over again, that you all have the power to do it now. So please don't wait. Don't wait for someone any longer because it is all of us. And I'm sure we all have amazing talents to share. So you feel it in your heart what it is. <laughs> so that's my message. And I try to keep that timeline as best as I can. Yeah. I always access to this timeline. Or when I feel the energy drains me a lot, especially what's happening now, right? I always tune into New Earth. What is New Earth? In my opinion, what is it? What education system we will have? Which financial system? What's about the environment? So and I, I keep that image over and over again. So maybe it helps you because I see this process continuous because we let go of so much, so much we letting go. And you will be surprised every time when a soul of their hits, you're confronted with your emotions or with your traumas again and maybe you thought ah yeah i'm already in peace with this right your head tells you this yeah i'm in peace with this until you face it until you experience it so shit no i'm not in peace with it <laughs> and that's i feel the divine call so we just got a stairway higher it, it looks to me like a stairway so to speak this we just got a stairway slowly higher yeah, and letting go of people you cannot help. Because I know many of us, we are worried, right? We want to help them all. We see the solution, right? We see many people struggling or they are really suffering. They are hopeless. They are in fear. But at the moment, you cannot help them all. You just can be an inspiration. And the more you shine, you are an inspiration. So the more you do what you love, the more you are an inspiration. So to self-care. So maybe this message resonates. So that's the message I over and over and over received from my Arthurian bar. They're over and over the same. Yeah. And they are a little bit worried. I already talked about it in my video about the spiritual war they also this division in the spiritual humanity. He's hijacked, he's infiltrated, he's AI, she's AI, she's evil, he's evil, he's a liar. Maybe you see the same. And this will not bring us together. That's what they tell me also. On the one hand, it's a process, right? It's like we just integrate our shadow side. So just, <laughs> we all do shadow work now. 
but in return, we don't need this. See, everyone is in the other state of consciousness. Everyone plays a character in a video game. See <laughs> when it sounds strange and just go your way. That's what the doctorates tell me over and over again. Yeah, I hope this resonates with you. It gives you a little bit hope that there is really more happening. So as Nordi Bieber explained in all detail why we entered the fourth dimension and why monsters, not just me, Marcel, were there during the same time, as he explained in all detail, then I understood, oh, wow, there's really so much more happening behind the scenes. That's what they tell me over and over again. There's really so much more happening behind the scenes. So please have faith. You feel it, right? You feel there is something else happening from behind, but you cannot see it yet. And this makes you wondering or maybe you're questioning everything because you cannot see it yet, but you feel it. So because there's really a lot happening at the moment. Yeah. So always keep in your mind, we stories are here because we are prepared. So don't go into this heavy timeline and tell yourself, oh, earth will be heavy. And we will all die soon. That's right. <laughs> that very heavy timeline. So please try to see the higher picture. Millions of us are here. And why did we agree to Earth when we waste our time anyway? You know, this makes no sense to me at all. We are so many now. So, and try to see this too. Try to get access to your timeline into new Earth. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any questions or are you struggling with this that you have that feeling of oh gosh now I'm in a very heavy timeline. One day later, oh you're so energized and they too, oh gosh, people will never wake up. Because that's what I noticed by many Cersei, like this extreme emotion. One day, yeah, you're so happy. One day later, oh gosh, we will die soon. They three, yeah, we are waking up. Oh no, we will all die soon. <laughs> Do you observe the same or maybe you're going for this? Extreme emotions yourself, always this up and down. Do you have this? Yes, Elena says yes. Yes, like we're just balancing the light and the dark out, what I see. Because 5 like, consciousness means you find peace with your shadow side and with your light side. It's like you are in peace with your shadows and with your light. That's what I'm getting is 5 consciousness. <laughs> because we are all in this together now, upside down, right? Yes, a few people agree. They say, yes, they also go through it. Yeah, it's a period of transition. So we just learned to balance the light and the dark out within us. So let's say when I studied a rabbit hole, when I feel, oh gosh, now I absorb too much, too much energies, I feel very depressed. So then it feels like, oh gosh, people will never wake up and earth will never change. So I feel very depressed and that's not me because I absorb the energies from the people from the rabbit hole too much so when I notice this happens what I do is I switch and I stay focused on my timeline again and go back into my heart so that's what I do when I feel it was too much I feel it immediately so I'm not in my body feels like I'm depressed negative or whatever and this is not us because basically we star seeds are very positive and optimistic. We are not no pessimist. Not for real. <laughs> so and just surrender and always see your heart center. Yeah. Trust always your intuition. When you're thought, oh fuck, there are many emotions coming up right now. Let them out. Let them all out. When I'm in tears, I simply cry. So even when I know, yeah, I'm a star seed. I have connections to the Octarians, right? But <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> because we are really all in this together. And I just let it out and let it flow. And then you see, boom, immediately it's over. Because when you just let it flow, it's done, it's over. The energy and the emotions are not stuck in your body. And, and this happens every time in this high vibrational code sitting, you just release and you release and not more. So that's it. <laughs> So I see Paul trying to understand good, they are good, bad. <laughs> it depends on your perspective again. So for example, a solar clarity. And now you're very emotional and you must cry. So many times when I purge and heal, I don't know if you have the same 
I see images why I cry. Sometimes I see pictures from my childhood or I see situations again. Sometimes I see pictures from a past life and then I'm in tears. So what I do is when I cry, I just let it out. So I don't judge myself and, oh gosh, you are crying. That's very low. Right? I'm not allowed to cry because it's a low vibration. That's not what I do. It's like when you trust your heart, so in your guidance with your heart, you will see your life is a roller coaster. You are not always in this vibration. It's like you vibrate here, you vibrate there, you vibrate here. It's like life is really a roller coaster. So it's not always the same emotion or the same feeling you have. So that's what I do. I just let it out and I don't judge myself. That's not what I do. Or that I tell myself, hey, stop crying, then draw all you stupid. <laughs> that, for example. No, that's not what I do. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, many times we judge ourselves, right? Because we believe we're not good the way we are. We are not perfect. Oh my gosh, I'm not allowed to cry because it's really a low frequency, right? And I want to vibrate in peace consciousness, you know? But when it's not authentic, when you cry now, when it's part of your process, don't simply let it out because then your soul guides you back. This is what I notice about myself. Thank you so much. Hi, Okura. I would like a deeper connection with my guides. What is the best method for clearer communications? Oh, wow. That's actually, <laughs> I lost the video onto this, I think. Because I feel there are many different methods to do this. At first, try to figure out what you can do very good. Maybe it sounds strange. For example, I love it always to sing. Because artists or musicians, I feel that many times they are in contact with their guides without realizing it, or they over and over channel information, secret information, or movie directors, the same. So the first, my suggestion is do what you love, be it do artwork, sing, or maybe you love it to do sun gazing, yoga, whatever it is, do something in which you really come back into your heart space. Yeah, when you do what you love, you're all centered in your heart. And the best or the easiest method is ask your higher self question. So to train that muscle. So ask yourself questions. So do meditation, close your eyes and ask yourself questions. And the first messages you receive in your heart are true. Don't question if it's good, if it's bad or whatever. The first messages are true. For example, is it good to eat that food now? Just an example, I mean, maybe it sounds strange, but train the connection to your house or first, I suggest, with your soul and see what kind of messages you receive. Is it a yes or a no? Because your heart speaks straight to you. There is no confusion. So entrain that muscle. And then you can do the same with your guide. So you also can call your guide and you can call them and say, my spirit guides, whoever you are, I want to be in contact with show up in the way which is best for me. So maybe you see them, maybe you hear them, or you receive messages, boom, straight in your heart again. And the first messages you receive are true. When you judge yourself, I think I'm going crazy. Is it real? Is it fake? I don't know. You can be sure it's your head. <laughs> That's another way such message from the soul. So I hope it helps you. But the first step I suggest do what you love. Find what you really enjoy. Because when you do what you enjoy, you are in contact with the divine. It very simply explained. So when I sing, there's like I'm immediately connected to my guide, to my higher self, to my team. Immediately. Because I love it so much to sing. So, or to speak the same. So then I build a connection already. And I hope so much this helps you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I hope it helps you. Thank you. How do you work with Yesha Mary Magdalene? And do you have an opinion on connected with all? So I'm a little bit careful with this general statements, but yes, I have a connection to her. So here we go from being in. So I love her music. So, and the tones. Yeah, I go in resonance with the frequency. I do exact the same when I work with Yesha Mary Magdalene. I feel their deep, unconditional love. 
So when I feel their energy, it reminds me always what true love is. So when I dive into Mary Magdalene and Yeshua, because what I get about them is they were twin flames, and Marcel and me are twin flames. And what I also noticed is that Yeshua and Mary Magdalene love to guide twin flame couples correctly on earth. Because these were one of the first twin flame couples which walked the earth, Yeshua and Mary Magdalene. And that's what I feel about them. They love it to support currently other twin flame couples on earth. And they're sending the messages, codes, and guidance as well. The first case, it's about balancing the divine feminine and masculine in the twin flame connection. When I dive into their energy, so I always feel the pure divine masculine and feminine energy by Yeshua Mary Magdalene. So that's why I work with them. And they always help you to remember what the divine feminine and masculine energy is. Because almost everything we know from the high check matrix is really inverted. We don't see the true masculine energy on TV yet, neither the feminine energy. So when I reconnect back to them, I over and over feel it. So, and I do it in exact the same way. So I love it to translate their energy. And when I translate their energy, many times I see gold, the golden light, the golden sun rays that have a very warm and a very healing, a sunny energy. And I work with Mary Magdalene when I want to dive deeper into the divine feminine's energy. God is healing. She helps me a lot as well. So, Sophia, I hope it already explains your question. Or else, can you explain masculine feminine energy more, please? Ooh, okay. Let's see. <laughs> Divine feminine's energy is trusting. She has faith. She is connected to the divine. She receives messages and downloads. She surrenders. So it's what I'm getting the divine feminine energy. When you have a very wide open sacred chakra, so your manifestation works completely different to what I noticed. So and maybe you know what I'm talking about. It's like you trust your intuition, you feel, but it comes back from the universe 10 times more. So when you work with the divine feminine, you surrender, you have deep faith in God, so to speak, because you receive the downloads. So and then you yeah, and then from the universe, it comes back 10 times more. And this happens when you just surrender, when you let go, yeah? You give no expectation. You just do what you love. You detach from it, bam, and it comes back to you always. So and that's what I feel is the divine feminine. She likes herself. The divine feminine is good in connecting the dots. She's like, she sees everything, right? And she can offer solutions, but in first case, she is very connected to the divine. So in this case, I suggest the movie Avatar, especially the first one, when you know Dinabi and the mother of Dinabi. That's what I feel is, yes, the divine feminine's energy. She just channels Ewa. So, and she is so sure that she channels the right information. When you know that movie, she's not confused. She knows it's a was message. So they are all listening to her. They take her seriously. So even when she says, I might really take care of Jake, he's needed. No one wants to do the job, but they do it because they believe in the mother's message. And that's what I feel is the divine feminine. And she works more from behind. Like when the people need help, when you know the movie Avatar just chaos, what are we going to do with Jake? Are we killing him or? We let him alive. So much chaos. Suddenly she appears. And I love that scene so much when she appears from the darkness, from the shadows. She suddenly appears. And everyone is quiet and they are all listening to her. And that's what I feel is the divine feminine. And she's not confused. She knows it's true. So at the end, it was true. <laughs> Eva was right. And she channeled the right information. That's what I thought is the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Hold the space for her. So he holds the space for her and he is centered. He knows and suffers. 
he has goals and he keeps going. He's the manifestator, so he creates. So that's what I see, and that's what the ancient fit. And the divine masculine is softer, what I see. So it's balanced because actually you have these two energies within you, right? You have these two energies within you, but the divine masculine's power is also very intuitive. It's not just this, you know, just centered in the head. So it's also very intuitive, so to speak. So, and also trust the divine or God, so to speak, but he holds the face for her and he takes you seriously. So this means when she receives a message, the divine masculine takes her seriously and her vision. So imagine you have these two energies within you and you receive a message now from the divine. You take yourself seriously and you take these messages seriously and you go forward to taking action. So that's the divine masculine's power. It's like you receive messages from the divine and you simply do it. So this is the divine masculine and feminine's energy in balance inside of you. So it's like you're not um, questioning, is it true? Is it wrong? Is it the right information? No, I wait. I ask the other person. <laughs> Maybe the other person will <laughs> what to do. <laughs> no. You receive the message, you believe in this message, and you simply do it. That's what I feel is the masculine's energy. So I don't know if this resonates so, with you. Yeah, if I could ask, a great information. What I've kind of gotten through a download is very similar to that and i can go a little further and see if i'm on track or not but basically it's my understanding that the divine feminine kind of works behind the scenes and is the grand orchestrator of sorts doing kind of the, the orchestration on the other side if you will you know there's a lot of moving parts and so it takes time and you know but you trust in that process the divine mask one, it's my understanding is, like you said, it's basically an executor of that pathway in this time frame. So it's kind of more short term in some ways because you're acting on a pathway that you've been shown from kind of the other side, so to speak. Thank you so much, Paul, for giving me your feedback and that you received almost the same download. Amazing. Thank you for coming on and uh, during these intense times of solar flares and disclosures and, you know, shadow shadows coming to the surface. I know it's intense time for many. So appreciate all that you do and all your work, all your play. Thank you so much for inviting me to show. It was a big honor for all guys. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you got fans here. So oh, thank <laughs> we're, you. I'm we're, honored. Yeah. I see. Yeah. I don't know how it is. yeah. <laughs> Definitely cheering you on out there in the in the TikTok worlds and, and the bigger platforms. So oh. we'll be supporting in, in any way we can. And we'll make sure your website and all that stuff is in the comments or in the descriptions below so people can reach out. Do you do private sessions? I do a live TikTok read, by the way. Oh, when do you do those? Almost every day. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Well, definitely, folks, if you're not into TikTok, now you got a reason. <laughs> So go check her out. So we'll say goodbye for now and close this one up. Thank you, Akura. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope you like this interview. We actually do this every week on my membership portal page. You can access it through interviewwithed.org or uh, click on the link uh, somewhere in here. I'll put a link and uh, come over and join us. You too can ask questions. Every week we have new special guests and you get to ask questions directly to the channelers and to the beings that they channel. So see you in the portal.